Muy bien, pues muy buenos días a todos. Gracias por estar aquí en nuestra segunda clase en vivo de Inglés Sin Dolor. Hoy es domingo y yo sé que no es fácil estar un domingo en clase, pero es nuestra segunda clase en vivo y uh, tuve muy buenos comentarios sobre la primera clase en vivo. Así que por eso uh, vamos a seguir haciendo estas clases eh, presenciales, pero quedarán eh, grabadas en nuestro canal de YouTube. Entonces, especialmente para las personas que están aquí por el, la primera vez, tenemos que tener en cuenta las siguientes cosas durante toda la clase. ¿Por qué? Porque esta no es una clase convencional. Esta no es la típica clase en que tienes que estar allí tomando apuntes, eh, preocupado porque no te sabes las conjugaciones o preocupado porque no te sabes algunas palabras y un poco frustrado. No. Esto, esta metodología se llama uh, input comprensible o comprehensible input. Y la idea es que yo trataré de hacer todo lo que diga, hacerlo entendible para ustedes. ¿Cómo? A través de palabras que conocemos, a través de palabras similares en español y en inglés, o a través de imágenes también. Pero parte de ello también es la forma en como yo entrego la clase y muy importante, la actitud de ustedes. Entonces, si ustedes se concentran por los próximos, digo, 40 minutos que durará la clase y ponen atención y tratan de entender, con la de, de poner atención con la intención de entender, de escuchar con la intención de atender, entender, eso es lo que los va a ayudar, ¿sí? Después, yo recomiendo volver a ver la clase en algún momento para recordar cosas. Eh, no necesitan escribir nada, es, vamos a hacerlo escuchando, 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 pero la clave aquí es permanecer unos 40 minutos en inglés, así que tu cerebro como que se acostumbra a escuchar el inglés así no haya entendido todo y eso es lo que te motiva a seguir adelante. Si tú vas a una clase de cualquier lengua y todo el tiempo te sentiste como que no entendiste nada, eso no te va a motivar a seguir aprendiendo la lengua. Y si tienes que ir a esa clase todos los días porque es parte de, de las clases de tu escuela, pues se convierte en una frustración muy grande. Si eres adulto y dices, ah, esto no es para mí, entonces ya dejas la clase y tranquilo. Pero la idea fundamental con el input comprensible es que te motives, que te motives a seguir. Muy bien, pero chicos, eso significa que el 50% lo tienen que poner ustedes. ¿Sí? Y ese 50% está um, conjugado en una buena actitud, en querer aprender. Algunas cosas para tener en cuenta durante toda la clase. Primero, relájate y escucha. Si estás así, frente a la cámara, tenso, no, oh, relájate, uff, relájate y escucha. Ok, eso sí, mira la cámara. Muy bien. Dos. Escucha con la intención de entender. Escucha con la intención de entender. Esa es la clave para aprender idiomas. Escucha con la intención de entender. Tres. Recuerda, tu nivel es irrelevante. Puede ser que tengas un nivel un poquito más alto que otras personas aquí. Eso no significa que esto no te ayude. Claro que te va a ayudar porque es otra uh, opción, otra oportunidad para escuchar el inglés. Y si no eres, estás en ese mismo nivel de esa primera persona de la que hablé, pues claro, te va a servir mucho más porque vas a empezar a ver nuevas palabras, nuevos usos. No tienes que tomar apuntes, notas, no, no tienes que hacer eso. Así que deja el bolígrafo afuera. Responde en tu cabeza y en el chat. O sea, a veces yo te voy a hacer una pregunta y quiero que respondas en tu cabeza que te hables a ti mismo en inglés, ¿sí? Lo chévere, lindo, guay, chido de eh, hablar uno mismo en su cabeza en inglés es que tiene una pronunciación perfecta. Pues claro, nadie lo escucha. <risa> eh, hoy vamos a intentar una nueva forma de interactuar con las preguntas. No las vamos a hacer por el chat, porque a veces en el chat se, es un poco loco y va muy rápido y no alcanzó a escoger algunas preguntas y, y bueno, vamos a hacer otra 
forma que les voy a explicar aquí. También, por favor, mantengan el micrófono apagado todo el tiempo. Uh, al final podemos encenderlo para responder preguntas o lo que sea. Entonces, tener en cuenta durante toda la clase estos aspectos es muy importante. No importa si estás viendo esta clase eh, en YouTube. Muy bien. Muy bien, entonces continuamos. Preguntas y respuestas. Entonces, yo voy a hacer una presentación y a veces voy a hacer unas preguntas. Para las respuestas, ustedes van a recibir en el chat un enlace. Es un enlace a Google. Y cuando abren ese enlace en otra ventana, no abandonen Zoom, en otra ventana podrán responder. Y yo podré ver sus respuestas aquí. Y después podré presentar algunas respuestas para seguir practicando. Entonces, la única cosa que puede ser un poco confusa es que esta forma está diseñada para que ustedes hagan preguntas, pero las vamos a hacer para que ustedes respondan a mis preguntas. Entonces, si ustedes leen ahí, ¿cuál es tu pregunta? No, piense, es para responder. Entonces, voy a responder en inglés a la pregunta que acaba de hacer Mr. Ojeda. ¿Ok? Entonces, voy a compartir ese enlace un poquito más adelante. Muy bien. Uh, ¿Qué otra cosa tenemos? Ahora, cuando respondas, ¿sí? Usa parte de la pregunta cuando respondas. Es súper fácil porque en inglés no tienes el problema que tenemos en español de la conjugación. Uh, muchas veces, a veces hay una diferencia un poquito muy, muy cercana. Pero, por ejemplo, si alguien te pregunta, do you eat apples? Entonces tú vas a decir, yes. I eat apples, pero esa eat apples es exactamente lo mismo que en la pregunta. Si preguntaras en español, ¿comes manzanas? El error de los estudiantes que aprenden español es que dicen, sí, yo comes manzanas. ¿Por qué? Porque en su idioma y si son hablantes del inglés, están acostumbrados a que el verbo no cambia y en esa respuesta. Estás usando la misma forma. Do you eat apples? Yes, I eat apples. ¿Sí? Entonces, usen parte de la pregunta porque es muy fácil usar parte de la pregunta para responder. Mira, aquí en este caso, lo único que has dicho tuyo es yes. <ríe> ¿Ok? El resto es simplemente parte de lo que venía en la pregunta. Ahora, si tu respuesta es no, entonces va a ser un poquito diferente, ¿no? Porque vas a tener que decir, no, I don't eat apples. Tienes que usar el auxiliar do, pero en negativo, I don't eat apples. Así que por ahora es mejor que comas muchas manzanas y solamente digas, yes, I eat apples. Muy bien, voy a poner esto en la forma de presentador en Google para poder usar eh, la forma de, mm, eh, de las preguntas. ¿Ok? Bueno, entonces estamos aquí. Entonces, continuamos. Continuamos. Muy bien. Ok, class. So, we're going to start with our class today. Welcome to Inglés Sin Dolor, live class number two. Today, we're going to talk about Barack Obama. Barack Obama is a very famous person in the world. Barack Obama was the United States president for two terms. So today we're going to learn about Barack Obama's life. This is Barack Obama. You have 
three pictures of Barack Obama. So this is Barack Obama's life. Okay. This is baby Barack. Uh, Barack was probably three months or four months old. He was very little. He was a baby. Baby Barack. Baby Barack Obama. So cute little baby. Barack was born in Hawaii. He was born in Hawaii. Hawaii is an island in the United States of America. It's a big island. So many people live in Hawaii. It's a beautiful place. You can see the mountains, you can see the sea, you can see the trees, the beach. So Hawaii is such a beautiful, beautiful place. Now, my first question for you, where were you born? Were you born in Hawaii? Wait, for example, where were you born, Mr. Ojeda? Then Mr. Ojeda says, I was born in Bogota, Colombia. I was born. So we are replacing this name for I because it's you. So I was born in. So where were you born is the question. Okay, so I'm going to send you a form so you can answer the question here. Answer the question. And I'm going to put this uh, in the chat. Do you see that? Um, okay, uh oh, un momento, uh oh. Okay, I can do this, I can do this, okay. Mm -hmm. If you copy and paste, copien y peguen ese enlace en otra ventana para responder. Okay. Where were you born? Okay. Where were you born? Okay. So remember, I was born in I don't have any answers. Abdul, how are you doing, my friend? I'm good. How about you? I'm doing very well, Abdul. Thank you very much. Hey, Abdul, where were you born? I was born in Agra, in India. You were born in Agra, India. That's very interesting. And uh, is Agra big or small city? Agra is big, big, big city. Um, about how many people lives in Agra? Oh my God. <laughs> um, exact figure, I think I won't be able to tell you, but I think more or less two million. Two million people. So it's a, it's a big city. Yes, for you. But in India, for me, it's not. <laughs> because in um, India, we have bigger cities than, than Agra. So Agra, in India, it's considered small city. Okay. So Abdul is from Agra. 
in India. Abdul was born in Agra, India, which is not a big city in India because there are bigger cities in India. Abdul says that Agra has 2 million people and uh, there are other cities in India with much more people. Like how many people lives in New Delhi, Abdul? New Delhi, 25 million. 25 million people yes. in New Delhi. Yes, it's half of the population of Colombia. <laughs> <laughs> half, of, half of Colombia's population. That is right. Thank you very much. So let me ask you again, Abdul. Abdul, where were you born? I was born in Agra. In I Agra? In Agra. India. India, yes. Muy bien. Thank you very much. Now, let's look at your answers. We have Jose. Jose was born in Madrid. Excellent. Thank you, Jose. Sebastian. Sebastian was born in Bogota, Bogota, Colombia. Ana Jelly. Ana Jelly was born in Hidalgo, Mexico. And David Felipe. David Felipe was born in Bogota, Colombia as well. Naomi was born in Mexico City. And Karina was born in Metepec, Hidalgo, Mexico. Okay, it's the same last name as the other person. And we were talking to Abdul. Abdul was born in Agra, India. Agra, India. Okay, more answers here. Joanna Beatriz was born in Buenos Aires. Ingrid was born in Bogota. Valeria was born in Guayaquil. Alexis was born in Puerto Rico. Puerto Asís, lo siento. Puerto Asís, Colombia. Uh, we have an anonymous, so we're not going to show that one. Ana Lucia was born in Panama. Sophie Gualdron was born in Bogotá, Colombia. And Delmi Paola was born in Chitoto. El Salvador. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Excellent. So this is the way we're going to answer the questions using that form. Okay, my friends. So here we go. Barack Obama was born on August 4, 1961. 1961. So that means that Barack Obama is 60 years old. 60. 60. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years old today. Well, not today, but this year. Abdul. When were you born? I was born in 1993. 1993. Uh -huh. So you are very young, Abdul. How are you today? I'm good. I'm 28 years old. I completed 28 years in September. 28 years old. You are a baby, Abdul. I don't think so. <laughs> okay, so Abdul is 28 years old. And Abdul, your birthday is in what month? September. September 15. September 15. Okay. Yes. So, friends, Barack Obama was born in Hawaii, United States, but Abdul was born in Agra. India, September 15, 
1993. Barack Obama is 60 years old and Abdul is 28 years old. So the question is, when is your birthday? For the answer, you're gonna say, my birthday is, but be careful when you write the word birthday spelling. Be careful, birthday, write slowly. When is your birthday? Responde, answer, my birthday is, hey, we're gonna see the answers. Okay, so when is your birthday? People, my birthday is May 16. May 16. That is my birthday. When is your birthday? Okay. Recuerden que estamos usando la dirección que ustedes ven en la diapositiva arriba. Copy y pega en otra pantalla para responder las preguntas. Google Slides app that go, esa dirección. Okay, so I see some answers here. Ana Jelly. Ana Jelly's birthday is July 17. Okay. Ana Jelly, my father's birthday is also July, but July 11. Naomi, your birthday is January 1st. So this is Anajeli and Naomi is January 1st. Naomi, my mom's birthday is January 2. And Carmen, your birthday is September 10. Okay, perfecto. Ana Lucia, Ana Lucia is from May. May 2nd, your birthday is May 2nd, great. Joanna, your birthday is December. Ooh, my brother, Carlos, also his birthday is in December. Valeria, your birthday is August 8th. Very well. David Felipe, February 8th. Alexis, May 24th. Ingrid, your birthday is on February 5th. And Jose, oh, Jose, my birthday is May 16. Your birthday is May 17. Man, we need to have a party. Yes. Sophie Gualdron, your birthday is June 23rd. My sister's birthday is in June as well. And Karina, your birthday is June 18. Catherine, your birthday is November 14. Oh, recently. Sebastian, April, April with P, April 7. And muy bien. Okay. I don't know who this person is, but this person's birthday is February 29th. Excellent. So, guys, remember. Barack Obama's birthday is August 4, 1961. Barack Obama is 60 years old. Very well. Okay, let's continue. Barack's mom was from Arkansas. Arkansas, this is the United States of America, my friends. And Senor Ojeda, Mr. Ojeda, me, I live here. This is Kentucky. This is where Kentucky Fried Chicken comes from. Very famous, KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken. So, and Louisville is like here, very close to Indiana. This is Kentucky, in, uh, Kentucky, uh, Indiana, Illinois, Wisconsin. This is Florida, this is Texas, this is Alaska, okay? This is California, big, 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 big state. So Barack Obama's mom was born in Arkansas. 
she was born in Arkansas. See, it says Arkansas, but in English they say Arkansas, Arkansas. So Barack's mom was from Arkansas. Look, in the middle, la mitad, in the middle of the United States of America. Uh, Arkansas is a state with not too many people. There's a lot of countryside. Hay mucho campo in Arkansas, okay? All right, so Abdul. Abdul, how are you doing, my friend? Yes, I'm doing well, teacher. Thank you so much, student. It's getting um, cold here in Santiago. It's cold right now. Yeah, in Santiago. Oh, you need yeah. you need to drink coffee. I'm drinking coffee, Abdul. I'm drinking hot water. Hot water? Uh-huh. Does that help you? It does, it does. Because when I'm cold, you know, I drink hot water. So it okay. helps. Okay. Uh -huh. Well, I don't drink hot water. I use hot water to take a shower. Well, me too. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. when I'm when I'm cold, I use coffee. Liquid power. Liquid power. Okay. Yes. Coffee. Very good. It's but, okay. So my mother is from well, it's a difficult to pronounce. Um it's a small city, well, village, I would say, in India. It's called Firozabad. Firozabad. I'm going to write down here, Firozabad. Firozabad. Uh -huh. Firozabad. Mom is from Firozabad. Okay. Firozabad. Now, Firo. people, in your head, Answer in your head. Where is your mom from? Listen to my head. I say, my mom is from Bucaramanga, Colombia. My mom is from Bucaramanga, Colombia. Now you answer the question in your head. You don't need to write. Where is your mom from? So Abdul's mom is from Virozabad, right, Abdul? Yes, she is, she is from Virozabad. Hey, Abdul, how many people lives in Virozabad? Well, let's say some 200,000. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's, a, it's a village? Yeah, it's a village in India. Okay, so yeah, probably, how, probably many fa how many families? My God, we are talking about 2,000 people, 200, 200,000 people. So but, but I, I thought that villages usually were composed of just certain families, no? No, it, yeah, for you, of course. Uh, being from Colombia, for you, yes. Mm -hmm. In Spain also, the villages are very small with four or thousand, four or five thousand people. But in India, mm, you know, as you know, it's second most populated country in the world. So how, villages... How many, how many people lives in India, the whole country? <laughs> 1,400 million people. 1,400? Million people. Okay, 1,400 millones de personas. Is that right, Abdul? Exactly, 1,400 millones de habitantes. 1,400 million people. That yes. Is... And for example, to tell you the population of United States, I mean, the population of entire continent of America, it's more or less like India. Like from the from Canada to Argentina, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Wow! Okay, wow. you can explain. You can explain to your students in Spanish right. if you want. Right. So it must be very difficult to be famous in India. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. It is. <laughs> okay. 
All right, so my friends, Barack Obama mom was from Arkansas. Arkansas is a state in the United States, in the middle of the United States. Uh, it's a big state, but very, very little people, not many people. Abdul's mom is from Virozabad in India with 200,000 people. But India has over 1,400 million people. Or you can also say 1,400. You can say two ways, 1,400 million people or 1,400 million people. It's the same. It's a little different, but the same. All right, thank you very much. Now, let's keep talking about Barack Obama. Barack's father, his dad, was from Kenya. Kenya, yes, in Africa. This is Africa. And here is Kenya, okay? So Barack's dad was from Kenya. Very interesting because Barack was born in Hawaii, but his mom was from Arkansas in the United States. But his dad was from Kenya, Kenya in Africa. Okay, Abdul, where is your dad from? My dad is from Agra, same city I am from. Okay, your dad is from Agra? And Agra is a city with 2 million people, right, Abdul? Yes, yes. Very well. So your dad is from Agra, but your mom is from Virozabad. Yes. Very interesting. Where, where did they meet? Did they meet in Virozabad or Agra? Well, they met in Frozabad. Frozabad, Frozabad. Okay. Yeah. Uh, why did your dad go to Frozabad? Okay, my dad didn't go to Frozabad. His parents went to Frozabad because as you know, in India, we have arranged marriage system. Uh -huh. So their marriage was arranged by their parents. Okay. So in India, marriage, uh, your family decides who you marry with, exactly. right? Exactly. exactly. Okay, that's the major called, part. The major part of India, yes. Ma major part of India. Okay, so it's, your family decides who you marry with. Okay, thank you. So your dad is from Agra. Hey, yes. Abdul, is Agra close to the Taj Mahal? Taj Mahal is Taj in Agra. Mm -hmm. It's close. It, it's in Agra. It's oh. in the city. Yeah, it, it's itself in the city. Taj Mahal is in Agra. Yeah, it's in my city. It's like eight kilometers from my house. Wow. For those who doesn't know what the, how you say it in Hindi? In, in well, I pronounce Taj, Taj Mahal. Taj Mahal. Mahal? No, Mahal. 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 Okay. Yes. This, okay. This in is... My in Agra. Abdul is from Agra. Indeed. Taj Mahal is in Agra, right? Indeed. 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 The indeed is another way to say yes. Indeed. Abdul, can you write indeed in the chat so they can say it, please? I did. Thank you very much. Okay, my friends. So remember, Barak's mom was from Arkansas. Barack's dad or father was from Kenya. In your head, answer, where is your dad from? So in your head, please answer, my dad is from, so in my head, I say, my dad is from Bucaramanga, Colombia. <laughs> Same as my, my mom, okay? Bucaramanga, Colombia. My dad is from. My dad is from. Where is your dad from? My dad is from in your head. 
All right, let's keep going. All right, Woo. next one. Uh, come on, Google Slides, we can do this. We can do this, Google Slides, yes, yes. Okay, okay, oh, let's go back, okay. From age six through 10, Barack lived in Indonesia. See, Indonesia. So Indonesia is a group of islands, but he lived for four years in Indonesia. So look at this. Barack Obama was born in Hawaii. His mom was from Arkansas in the United States. His dad was from Kenya in Africa. And then when he was six years old, he lived in Indonesia. So it's a person with many cultural experiences. Abdul, have you lived outside of your country? Yes, I have lived outside of my country. Like, can I you lived, please, can you please slowly explain us where and when? I lived five months in Colombia. In Colombia? In Bogota. In Bogota. Five months in Bogota? Yes, five months in Bogota. And okay, I was studying in uh, in la Universidad de Pontificia Javeriana. Okay. I was studying in Javeriana for five months in Bogota. Okay. And then I'm in Spain for last four years. So right now you're in Spain. I'm in Spain for last four years. For the last four years. And Abdul, do you think that for a person living in different countries is important for a person? It is, it is, uh, it's really important because uh, your perspective to see things enrich a lot, a lot, because you talk to different people uh, in different language, different culture, uh, different customs. Um, so you, you learn a lot. You know, in terms of your personal growth, right. as a person, as a person, you grow a lot. Thank you, Abdul. So, friends, remember, Barack Obama was born in Hawaii, United States. His mom was born in Arkansas, United States. His dad was born in um, Kenya, Africa, and uh, Barack Obama was four years in Indonesia. Abdul was five months in Colombia and he is right now in Spain for four years. For the last four years, Abdul is in Spain. I ask Abdul, Abdul, is it important for people to live outside of their countries? And Abdul says, yes, you learn not just the language, but it helps you grow as a person. Te ayuda a crecer como persona. Okay, so Barack Obama, see? Very different from Donald Trump. Donald Trump doesn't have these experiences in life. Okay, Barack also lived with his grandparents his grandparents, grandfather and grandmother. These are Barack's mom's father and mother. See, they are very white. They were from Arkansas. Um, so Barack had to live with his grandparents because his mom and his dad divorced. They separated. Then his mom married another person. So Barack was like, he didn't know where to go. So he went and lived with his grandparents when he was in high school, in high school. 
he used to live with his grandparents. Um, he didn't have a good time living with his grandparents because Barack had a lot of identity problems, issues. As you can see, he is a black person, but the people close to him were white. So he couldn't find his identity. It was hard for him to find his own identity. And his parents, grandparents, grandfather and grandmother, they were a little mm, racist. Not to Barack. They were really nice, kind to Barack, but they were a little racist with other black people. So that conflicted Barack. Lo conflictua. See, how can they like me, but they don't like other black people? That's a conflict. See? All right. So remember, Barack also lived with his grandparents. Hey, Abdul, have you lived with your grandparents? Yes, I did. I did uh, from my mother's side also and my father's side. Okay, for how long time do you live with your mother's side's grandparents? Well, I still have them. I still have them. They live in a village in Frozabad, where my mother from. And from my father's side, only my grandmother is alive. Okay. My grandfather died when I was three years old. Okay. So in 1996, my grandfather passed away. Yeah. From my father's side, yes. From but yes, I, I do remember memories from, from him. I remember when I was three years old. Okay. I remember I remember that day when he died, actually. No. Why? Yes, I do. He was sick. He was 90 okay. years old. Okay. 90, 90 and something. And uh -huh. uh, I remember. Mm -hmm. So your grandparents, so you remember them very well. I do, because I still have my grandmother from my father's side. I still do video call with her on WhatsApp. Oh, on WhatsApp, you? Sometimes I do video call with my grandmother from my father's side. And from my mother's side also, I talk to them often. Okay, thank you very much. My grandparents, they all are not here anymore. But my grandmother, my mom's mom, my grandmother, she was my favorite person in the world. She was just an amazing, hardworking person. My grandma, Abdul, and friends, she used to clean houses for a living. And she was such a optimistic, happy lady. And she worked, 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 worked really hard until she was able to buy a little store. So she bought a little store where she used to sell food. So she, for many years, she worked cleaning houses and then she worked on her little store. And when I was little, I used to go to Bucaramanga to help her at the store. Okay. All right. So grandparents, Barak also lived with his grandparents already. Here we go. Barak played basketball during high school. And this is actually, de hecho, actually a picture of Barak playing basketball for his high school. This is him playing basketball. As you can see, most of the people, players were white. He was one of the few black players on his team because his, his family, you know, his mom had, his family had a little money, money. So Barack was able to go to a good school but most of the people at good school, that good school were white people. Barack was one of the very few black persons going to this school. 
So he was probably the only black basketball player in his high school. So Barack played basketball during high school. Okay, my friends, answer, answer. Do you play a sport? Please write your answer. Do you play a sport? Please answer. Yes, I play and then the sport. For example, yes, I play soccer. Yes, I play baseball, okay? So in the form, Google form, answer. Do you play a sport? Yes, I play. Or no, I don't play a sport, okay? Abdul, do you play a sport? Yes, I do. I play cricket. Cricket, okay, very well, cricket, very well. Um, Sebastian says, no, I don't play a sport. Okay, that's good. Some people doesn't play sports, some people play sports. Okay, so cricket. Cricket is a very interesting game, very popular in India. Abdul plays cricket. Abdul, this is cricket? Yes, it is. It's, it's like baseball? More or less, you can say. Yeah, okay. There's Abdul playing cricket. Cricket. Okay. Uh, more answers. It says, uh, no, I don't play sport, Jose. Uh, because Jose is all the time on his computer. He doesn't play a sport. <laughs> Ana Lucia. Yes, I play soccer. Okay, Ana Lucia, muy bien. And Valeria doesn't play. Oh, look at this, Ana Jelly. Ana Jelly says, I play a lot of sports, but not professionally. Okay, she doesn't play a professional sport. Lourdes, no, I don't play a sport, but she dances. Yes, Lourdes, I have seen you dancing, like Peruvian dance. You do it on Facebook, I saw that. Uh, Sophie Gualdron, yes, I play a sport and our friend Biringo plays basketball. Okay, perfect. Good job, guys. Let's keep going. We're almost done today. Barack, Barack went to Columbia University. So this is Barack Obama's um, kind of like a fake ID, uh, it's not real, uh, but it looked like this. So he went to Columbia University. Columbia University is in New York. Mm. And it's a famous university. Um, it's expensive to go to Columbia University unless, a menos que, unless you have um, a scholarship or something like that. So he went to Columbia University and Columbia University is in New York. And he was a very good student at Columbia University. Brack also, let's see, okay. Let's see, uh-oh, 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 aqui. Um, Barack graduated in political science. So he went to Columbia University in New York and he studied political science. And this is Barack getting his diploma in political science. Abdul, did you go to an university? Yes, I went to the university in New Delhi. Oh, and that city with with uh, 400, how many people? In 25, 25 million. With 25 million. Okay, it's uh, the name of uh, your university or college, Columbia University in New, New Delhi? Um, What's the name of your college? The, the name of... The name of my university was Jawaharlal Nehru University. Jawaharlal Nehru. 
Yes, because he was the first president of India. Oh, it's the name of a, a, a person. First, so the, uh, the, 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 yes, the first president of India. First president of India, Jawaharlal. Oh, Abdul, did you, did you study political science? No, I did not. I wish, but yeah, Barack, Barack Obama, he did. I studied Spanish literature. Oh, Spanish literature, very interesting in India. Mm -hmm. Okay, then did you study more after that? After that, yes, I did my master's also mm -hmm. in the same subject. And then I studied, as I said before, in Colombia. Mm -hmm. And I studied here in Spain and I'm still studying. I can say I, am, I have been studying for ages. <laughs> and Abdul, did you study your master's in India as well? Yes, after my graduation, I studied master's in India. And in Spanish literature? Yes. Okay. In, in Estudios Hispánicos. Estudios Hispánicos, Hispanic literature. Very well, thank you very much. So friends, Barack Obama went to Columbia University in New York. He studied political science. And then Obama worked in Chicago for nonprofit organizations. Nonprofit organization is una organización sin ánimo de lucro, meaning you don't work for money. You work to help people. So Barack Obama worked in nonprofit organizations for a couple of years in Chicago. This is a picture of Barack working in some Chicago neighborhoods. So he went to Columbia University, he studied political science, and he worked for nonprofit organizations, nonprofit. In your head, repeat to yourself, nonprofit. Nonprofit. A nonprofit organization is an organization that doesn't collect money and you have to work for no money, for no payment. You work as a volunteer, okay? So Barack Obama worked for nonprofit organizations helping people in Chicago. Friends, Chicago is a beautiful city. But there is a lot of poverty in Chicago. There are some parts of Chicago where many people live on the street. Yeah, this is the United States of America, but there are people living on the streets as well. Don't think that people living in the streets, it's only in Latin America. Mm -mm. Here in Louisville, there are people living on the streets in La Calle also. So there are many, many poor disadvantaged people also living in the streets in big cities like Chicago, Washington, New York, Houston. I went to California two weeks ago and I went to Sacramento and San Jose in California. Many people are homeless. Homeless means homeless, gente sin hogar. Many people homeless, uh, living in tents, carpas, on the street, in Sacramento, California, San Jose, California. So it's an issue also here in the United States. So Barack Obama went to Columbia University, then he graduated in political science, and then he worked as a volunteer in Chicago helping people in these communities. Then Barack Obama went to Harvard. He went to Harvard. Harvard is the most famous university, college, pretty much in the world. Harvard, it's tough. Tough means difficult, but it's a very good university. 
you can go to Harvard if you need money, but you also need to be very smart, very intelligent, very smart to study in Harvard. Well, Barack Obama was very smart, intelligent, so he was able, Pudo, he was able, Pudo, he was able to go to Harvard University. Um, I think I have two students of mine who went to Harvard. They were very, very smart students, okay? So this is a picture of Barack uh, in Harvard, okay? And during his time in Harvard, Barack wrote a book. He wrote a book about his father, his father from Kenya, remember? So the title of the book was Dreams from My Father by Barack Obama, a story of race and inheritance. Una historia de raza y de herencia. Very interesting because when Barack was in Harvard, he went to Kenya. Um, his dad was dead, his dad died, and uh, he went to Kenya to visit his dad's family. So he met a different culture. Part of his culture was from Kenya. So when he came back to the United States, to Harvard, he wrote this book, Dreams from My Father. It's a beautiful book. It's in English, in Spanish, in French, in Italian, in German, in many languages. I recommend you read this book because it's like Abdul was saying, it's the encounter, encuentro, it's the encounter between cultures and then you, you grow, you learn new things. You feel different. You feel like a different and a better person because your world is bigger. Dreams from My Father by Barack Obama. He wrote this book during his time in Harvard. Then in 1989, 1989, these numbers in English are so easy because in English, you divide the number in two. You say 19 and 89. So if you know your numbers from one to 100, you know all the numbers in English. Let's just put it that way, <laughs> at least the thousands. In Spanish, uh, my Spanish students have a hard time. It's difficult for them because in Spanish, you have to say, 1989. They try to say 1989. But no, 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 no. 1989. But in English, you can say 1989. So in 1989, Barack meets Michelle. Okay, his wife. So this is Michelle. And uh, they met in Chicago when Barack was working in Chicago in 1988, 89, sorry, 89, or, um, and um, she was working with some lawyers because Michelle is a lawyer, a bogada, a lawyer, very, she was very good lawyer in Chicago. Barack was also studying political sciences, they met, in Chicago, so um, they got together in 1989. All right, so Barack and Michelle married in 1992, one year before Abdul was born. They got married in 1992. Um, I believe they got married in Chicago as well. So Barack and Michelle Obama. We're almost done, friends, almost done. Let's see if our computer works well. Okay. Just be patient, we're almost done here. Come on, computer. Okay. 
Okay. Let's see. Yes. 1992. And then they had their first daughter. Barack and Michelle had their first daughter. And their first daughter was Malia. Malia Ann Obama. She was born in 1998. So this is a picture of Barack with Malia. And this is Malia when Barack was a president. Now she is in college, you know. Uh, she's born in 1998. So she's like, what, 23 years old? She's probably going to uh, graduate from university, from college pretty soon. Okay. And then, um, oh, this is the other girl. Her, her name is not Malia Ann. Her name is Michelle. Michelle. This is Malia and this is Michelle. Uh, and I, the, the time is different. Uh, Michelle was born in 2002, I think. So this is the other girl, Michelle. Okay. Obama is a fan of the Chicago White Sox. The Chicago White Sox is a baseball team in Chicago. Um, so Barack Obama was also elected president in 2008 and 2012. Barack Obama was the first black president of the United States of America. And um, I was here in the United States when Barack Obama was elected president in 2008. And for me, as a minority, it was very important um, happening here that a black person was elected president in the United States was a very good thing for this society. All right, my friend, do you want to be a president? Abdul, this is my last question for you. Do you want to be a president? Well, depends, president of India or president of United States. Do you want to be <laughs> the president of India? Um, I would love to, I think. You will probably, love to. Probably I can do better things than the, our, you know, <laughs> our current president of India. But you're going to have 1,400 million people. Yes, I know. Mm -hmm. And trust me, majority of them will vote me. Okay. So, <laughs> President Abdul, thank you so much for helping us today. <laughs> Thank you. No, it's been it's been a pleasure. It's it's very interesting your sessions. Thank you very much. Hasta yo Friends. me divierto en, en, su, en su clase. Hasta yo me divierto, dice Abdul. <laughs> <laughs> so friends, thank you very much. Don't go yet. Thank you very much. Please follow me on Instagram at señor underscore Ojeda or ingles underscore sin underscore dolor if you have Instagram. Follow my YouTube channels. The one that we have here is uh, diegoojeda.edu. So I'm going to stop the recording. Uh, okay.